good afternoon. It's my pleasure to share my thoughts, but uh, I get a cue from the two speakers previously who have been emphasizing on women's role. And whatever I have been doing for the last four decades, they were guided by the difficulties faced by the women with respect to water. I'm giving a short brief this thing because whenever I used to go to different field investigations covering about 14 river basins in the country, I used to interact with the women in the villages. And always I used to ask, what would you like? Would you like to have water or you would like to have entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Water. So I felt that yes, majority are telling that, sir, water, if we get in plenty, then only we can entertain anything what is placed before as an entertainment. That made me plan my activities and everything. Yeah. You know that, yes, we are dependent on water and almost 97% of the water in the globe is salt water. And fresh water is only 2.5%, and which are also all accumulated in ice caps and glaciers. And available groundwater, which is in the freshwater category, is only 0.7%. River lakes and others, they're only 0.05%. And most of this groundwater which accumulated in the underground hidden geological formation in decades, years, and other thing. It, this diagram shows only that groundwater doesn't occur. How many of us, we know that is, how does the groundwater occur underground? Most of us practically, we feel that yes, it is a single formation, but it's having one unconfined aquifer and one is confined aquifer. And they are recharge areas. Water is life. And increasing water demand, use, and consumption due to the rapid growth in population, agriculture, and urbanization, they are putting more and more pressure on the water demand. And added to that, the industrial development and economic competitions for the development and aspirations and non-availability of the surface water adequately at the time when women in the villages, they require it. That puts a lot of pressure on the groundwater system. When we talk about the groundwater, in my experience, I found that most of the village community in different villages in the country, they say that, yes, sir, why do you waste your time in coming and ensuring that, yes, we will get plenty of water? Because we think that we have never got water in the past and we never get, will get in the future also. Why? Because we are more dependent on availability of adequate amount of groundwater from this thing. Interesting point is that 70 to 90% of the food security in the country all over the world depends on availability of groundwater of good quality. Many of us, or most of us, I found, we are absolutely ignorant about that. And we have taken it for granted that water is available, and it should be freely available, and it should be available in plenty without any charge. Am I wrong? Or you feel that, no, what I'm saying is carries some meaning. 78% of the available groundwater is also polluted and surface water is also polluted. Many of the advanced technologies, many of the advanced technologies which has been suggested in the past and which has been implemented, like water diversion, sewage treatment plants, aquifer recharge, they could not really ensure the free water available to the different village community. Neither they could suggest a water security. I suggest a new paradigm where by interaction with the women in the villages, I found 
that unless we have a collaborative and cooperative approach by taking together the women village community and ensure that how to protect these groundwater resources, perhaps women in the country can never ensure adequate water availability and what to talk about the food security or the water security. We tried to carry out the investigations and we found that most of the countries, they are having very little amount of water which is falling as a rainfall going to the groundwater. It has been raining in Chandigarh or Mali area for past two days. Please raise your hands that how many of us really bothered that what is happening to this water? I don't see any raised hand because we were more concerned to how to protect us with an umbrella. <laughs> we are more concerned with how to protect us from the flooding. We never bothered that what is happening. I was feeling a little bit embarrassed when some of these young girls and boys, they were holding an umbrella for me to protect me. Because I never felt that yes, if I get drenched with rainfall, I will melt or I will dissolve. <laughs> anyway, these are some of the characteristics feature of how much of rainfall is going down to the groundwater system. You can see wide variation. In some places, less than 1%, while at some places it is 20%. And this varies and depends upon the soil characteristics and other. And whatever groundwater is getting recharged from the rainfall, it gets also polluted. And this is with our technological advancement, we try to migrate, show the migration of the pollutants within the groundwater system in the Delhi area. I am presenting only in Delhi area, but we have done these studies in 14 river basins in the country. And you can see that these red things, they are indicating the pollutants migration and where are they affecting. It is all essentially due to leaching of the wastes disposed very indiscriminately on the land surface in the river, which most of us, we know. Question arises is that, how can we achieve a good groundwater security, which is associated with the food security as well? I personally felt, again by interaction with the village folk, particularly the women folk, they said, sir, hum to har dam apne aapi groundwater ko manage karte hain. Aur ye jay tamam sare organizations hai, inho ne kabhi bhi aakar ke hum se nahi poochha ki aapko kya difficulties hai paani ke liye. I personally feel that groundwater security can be achieved by well-filled management, by local self-help group, which can promote the local public network, bring together all of them, and try to ensure that, yes, they can have chalk out a common platform, chalk out a common plan of work, and ensure that, yes, this is how we can ensure water security. That will require several other things, like even maintenance of the wells, which men folk, they forget in the villages. Second thing I felt that, yes, where such self-help groups cannot be established, Perhaps many of the information on the water table lowering, as well as the volume of water, which is going to the groundwater system from the rainfall, they can monitor by taking involvement of the technology experts. And we have done these experiments very successfully. And we found that realistic measures could be there by change in public perception, attitude, and mindset and behavior by raising awareness about the value of water. Groundwater depletion, pollution, and stop regional polarization, which is taking place as social and political groups for local power gain, self-interest, and self benefits And we could mobilize in many of the villages, young women, as well as elderly women, associated with young persons. Our experience indicated 
that women come forward to join in our movement much easily than the men folk. I don't know, whatever be the reason. We have to also control the multi-level governance by the government authorities only in the name of ensuring water security. Behavioral change has to be done on the management of water demand. There I found that yes, the women in the villages, they can develop their own capacity, how to conserve water, how to protect water, and how to enhance water use efficiency. Because in my experience, I found that when the water scarcity comes, it is the women, they get highly hard pressed and they have to ensure everything. We have to also explain them how to distinguish between the water rights and the right to water. These are all very difficult terminology, but to my utter surprises that in the villages, which constitute about 70% of the population in the country, women are much more clear about the water rights and right to water and the distinction between them than the men folk. I could not understand why men are least bothered about that. <laughs> Perhaps I found that the men are more interested in working hand with, in hand with the greedy investors for their personal benefits and for their personal uh, interest, only for self-gain before the public welfare. What it happens is that whenever we try to talk about all these changes, we have to ensure that apart from the billion, we have to encourage the individual group and take actions and decisions ethically. Everybody who has in the past few lectures talked about the values, value system. With respect to the water, I think value of water, honesty, trust, transparency, sharing of knowledge and responsibility is very, very little. To my utter surprise, these village folk, they are more knowledgeable about these responsibilities and the values of water rather than the highly scientific and technological persons and how to train them like that. This will ensure citizens' welfare, safety, and development. To wrap up, with a dynamic groundwater recharge of 432 billion cubic meter, India is the global champion of groundwater pumping for 330 lakhs individual pumping decisions. And these individual pumping decisions are again guided by the self-interest, self-greed, and self-benefit. Unless we try to remove all these difficulties, it will be very difficult for us to ensure groundwater security and food security. I thought that yes, perhaps time has come in the country as well as all over the globe, that instead of trying to prove the relevance of several excellent fields, we should try to develop excellence in relevant fields. And I can recollect one quote which was given long time back, physics Nobel laureate Max Born. It quotes like that, intellect distinguishes between possible and impossible, and reason distinguishes between sensible and senseless. Even a possible thing can be senseless and an impossible thing can be sensible. And that impossible thing is involvement of the women and have a collaborative and cooperative. Thank you very much. <laughs>